about 13 miles from downtown Atlanta. Welcome to Truist Park. A great night for baseball ahead on the show. It's the Philadelphia Phillies going up against the Atlanta Braves. First pitch coming your way next. So just about set now and on the hill Spencer Strider we know he's one of the best in the game doesn't make many mistakes and if he's in a pitch he'll make up a pitch and throw something that you've never seen before Kyle Schwarber comes up to hit here Kyle Schwarber. and a pitch that missed by a lot and this one is off and running. Boots it. But he wins the foot race to first. Good job of knowing how much time he had there. And time now for the Phillies lineup. They're dealing with a top-level arm on the mound, so this figures to be a tough matchup for them. What's the key to the offense today, Singy? Oh, Boog, I think when you got a guy that's this talented on the mound, you've got to find ways to disrupt his rhythm, make him uncomfortable a little bit. The guys that can handle the bat and perhaps, you know, bunt, bunt for a base hit, get him moving off the mound. If you're in the box and he seems to be just in a flow, oh, step out, mess up his timing, somehow try to get in his head a little bit, and then when he does come in the zone, you may only get one pitch. You better not miss it. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. One out, base is empty. Swings and misses, struck him out. Well, clearly just anxious right there, and understandably so in an 0-2 count. You feel like you've got a lot of plate to cover, and you don't want to strike out, and you end up striking out. That's just one of those pitches where it's not over the plate, but because you committed to it as it was leaving his hand, by the time you realized it wasn't going to be in the zone, it's too late to hold up your swing. Bryce Harper in the box now. No balls and a strike. And Singy, as a team, you need to make the most of the very few opportunities he's going to give you, right? Absolutely. And, and you know, if you don't get to guys like this, a lot of times early, once they really settle in, it's going to be the later innings that they hand that ball over to a reliever if they do at all. And now one and two. One ball, two strikes, you count. And it finds its way through for a hit. Big knot there to keep the inning alive and an opportunity to put something in the gap and give the Phillies the lead. So a change being made at first base. Pinch running for the Phillies. Edmundo Sosa. Nick Castellanos at the plate now. That one is absolutely belted into the corner, but foul. If it were an average catcher behind the plate, I'd say take second base, but this isn't a catcher you want to run on. His quick release is unreal. Two outs. Two one. And that drops in for a strike. Sosa off the first with two away. Three. And a swing and a miss. That's out number three. Sometimes he wears the emotion on the sleeve, but that's okay as long as he's getting results. And right there, thrilled with the punch out to get out of a jam. at Truist Park and on the hill the big righty Zach Wheeler 
power pitcher. He's going to speed you up with the fastball velocity, and out of his hand will explode the breaking ball. Very difficult for hitters to keep that front side closed and hit the ball the other way because they know if they're not ready to pull the trigger, the fastball will beat them. So coming into the game now on defense, Edmundo Sosa. He takes over as the new first baseman. So now to the plate for Atlanta, Ronald Acuna Jr. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. Up and in, and that is ball one. Wouldn't chase that time. Ripped to third and caught. Here's Brian Snickers lineup for the Braves. Chris, this is a lineup offensively that could be really good for years to come. They're deep, first and foremost, but the way that they can manipulate their personnel for matchups and everything else, it's uh, very intelligent the way that they use their team. And I, I think it creates a little bit of a... Uh, uncertainty for opposing teams especially in a big game big series Ozzie Albies swings through it for strike one the wind of the pitch out towards left center he's under it makes the grab that's out number two Batting third, the third baseman. Here's Austin Riley. Outfield deep here, trying to prevent anything over their heads. First pitch doesn't find the zone. And there's a strike. Good heater at 98. Out there on the mound, he's setting the tone early with the fastball, 98 miles per hour up on the scoreboard. Next pitch way upstairs. Right through there for a strike. This guy's got good power with one swing. He can win it for him. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. And the pitch. And another ball. Matt Olson in the on-deck circle, hoping to get a chance to make a big impact here. Good battle here, about to be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. This one high in the air to left center. Sizing this one up. Makes the grab, and that's the inning. Scoreless after one. And welcome back to the ballpark. Second inning set to go. Now the third baseman, Alec Bohm. And here it comes. That one finds the corner. Going one. I mean, that's perfect location right on the black. I mean, over and over again, this guy demonstrates the ability to hit those spots. They're so tough to do anything with as a hitter. Mike Fillmore, our plate umpire. Very consistent with his zone, Chris. Gets a lot of praise for that. He does, Boog. And I think that with any umpire, you really just want them to be consistent. Fillmore's a guy that does a good job back there in that way. So people around the league really appreciate his consistency. Curveball kind of backed up on him there. I think it just slid out of the hand a little bit too soon. Phillies fans want a strikeout. And now the count is even. The throw is wild and it gets away. 
So they hold the runner in third, wanting to play it safe. Think that comes back to bite him? Boy, it's hard to say. That runner on second to start extras is critical, and you want to make sure you don't waste him. They don't score this inning. There'll be some second guessing for sure. Making a move at third, coming in as the pinch runner, Whit Merrifield. This is Bryson Stott. And that's through there for a strike. Oh, and one. The pitch. Got the back going too soon and strike two. Well, in this situation with a runner on first, less than two outs, some say, hey, get the ground ball double play with two strikes. Some people say get the strike out. I think you just execute your pitch. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. Huge strike out there. So he needed a strike out there, and he got it. And now we'll see how they play it defensively. Yeah, now they can move the middle infielders back a little bit, get into double play depth, and look for a ground ball and roll it up, get a big double play, get out of this inning. I tell you what, that was a big strikeout in the spot where they really needed one. And now it is JT Real Muto. Third out. So one hit is all they get. We go to the bottom of inning number two. We're tied, nothing, nothing. Now into the ball game on defense, Whit Merrifield. He takes over and right. Runner in scoring position, no outs. Here's Matt Olson. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. The right-hander back to work. Line drive. The winning run crosses the plate, and they will walk it off. Well, you come to the ballpark hoping you'll see something special that day, whether you're a player or a fan. A walk-off win, nobody forgets that. A memorable moment that'll be logged in the backs of the minds of everybody that witnessed this here today. The final one to nothing for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Chambi. Thanks for joining us.